It is thoroughly a thrill and a privilege to get to introduce to you tonight uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton for an evening I assure you you will remember from now on. And without another word, I ask you to warmly welcome Bruce Lipton. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to speak here. Uh, I want to thank Doug and the, all the members of the Caring Center and the video crew for this uh, wonderful chance because I have the great privilege of presenting to information tonight that hasn't really been put out in the public a lot. And it stems from my work as a research scientist. Basically, my work was involved with cloning human muscle cells. I was working with dystrophic patients and taking out human cells and trying to understand what the control mechanisms were that were providing for the pathological expression of the cell. And I was doing this while teaching in medical school, as Doug said. The interesting thing was this. After my years of research, I started to recognize something that some of our current beliefs and our, our truths about medicine are actually not very correct at all that there's a revolution going on in the healthcare uh, area, but it's at the leading edge of research. And where I was working at that end, I found that it really should come down to the people. It's really more important for you to understand because the information I'm going to present tonight is very, very self-empowering information because it really reveals that we've had some very well, assumptions, and I'm going to list them for you. And you know the definition of assume uh, that uh, that we have been we really have been messed up by some some ideas that are not absolutely correct. And now, if I try to correct them and present them to you with an understanding of how biology works, which is relatively simple because nature is simple in how she does everything. Once I explain this, and you really start to see how powerful you have been, but how limited you have been because of alterations in our belief about how powerful we've been. That we've held some very important beliefs that have been transmitted from science to the public. And the issue about that is in converting the scientific information into public words, a lot of the meaning has been shifted around and it's not exactly the truth. So there's a, a thing that you've heard about genetic determinism, for example, that you are controlled by genes. And during the first hour of this presentation tonight, what I really want to show you is the, the, other, the other truth, that there is a truth that's, that says that, in fact, that you're not controlled by genes. You're actually controlled by your perceptions of the environment. And as we'll talk about, perceptions mean beliefs. And the significance about this is that when we talk about genes, and we talk about genetic uh, illnesses or genetic predispositions. Let me give you an important factoid first. Indeed, there are things called genetic defects, and they affect about 5% of the population. Well, what I'm really trying to address is this. It's the 95% of the population that got here with wonderful genes and were capable in all ways being biologically sound, and yet end up uh, expressing illnesses and cancers and early death and cardiovascular diseases. And there's a tendency, of course, for us to put this emphasis and onus on the genes. But it turns out, no, it really turns out that it's how the genes are selected and rewritten by our belief systems. I was working on cloning these cells, and what I started to recognize was that because part of my experiment was uh, destroying the DNA and watching the behavior of the cell. And the, and the surprising part is, is that you can destroy all the DNA and the cell still has a life and it still has behavior. And the belief is if DNA is controlling the cell, then what's controlling the cell after all the DNA is gone? Well, this is what led me to an understanding of the real brain of the cell, which is what the subject of this movie is going to be about, ultimately. And then basically what I started to recognize was that uh, I got really excited about it because it's like, oh my God, this is a whole new understanding of science at the time. And uh, I started to go out and lecture about it. And it was real exciting because uh, the conventional people, my colleagues and peers all understood it, but they were still wary of it because we've invested so much money in the belief of genes and drugs that it was real hard for them to, to shift midstream and start to look at other alternative beliefs. And so the significance about it was this, is that for the first two years, I was all excited going out, talking to people, and telling them about, God, this is great understanding. If you really understand this stuff, how powerful it is on your life and how you can change your life. And then I started recognizing people look at me and go, you know, Bruce, this is a great story, but your life doesn't look so great to me. And I realized the truth, and this was the important part about it, was we always put, the, we think that if we just take this academic information in our head, then all of a sudden our lives are going to change. It's sort of like, a, it's like an academic pill. If I take the pill, I'm going to be better. And I realized at some point, especially when I almost heard myself say to these people, I said, well, do as I say, not as I do. 
And I realized at some point, well, how can I be talking about this great stuff and yet not applying it to my life? And that's when I realized at some point I said, okay, let's not talk about this anymore until you go out and actually try to live that way. So the beautiful part about it is now, 15 years into this, it only took me a few months to start to recognize the change, but here's a simple reality. I left the world that if I was going to live in it and give it a title, I would have called it maybe purgatory at best. And now I find myself living in heaven on a day-by-day -day basis to recognize this, that we have a great influence over the unfoldment of our lives, but we have never really been given clarification of how that influences our lives. And so the significance of this is real in that I can provide you with this information. You can walk away with the information, but there's a point where actually you have to start participating in it like I had to do it and start to incorporate it into our lifestyle because we can change belief. What's unusual about these women? And what's unusual about these women are their ages. And if you check out the ages of these women, Dorothy at 75 years old is dancing every night in the Palm Springs Follies. The minimum age to get in the Follies is 55 years of age. The significance about these women is, of course, first of all, you notice the vitality that they have. You'll also probably recognize at some point that they don't get affected by the same things that other people experience as they get older. And so what is the issue that gives them this vitality? This is the basic question. Our conventional understanding is that genes provide for this. So all of us hear all the time in newspaper articles, on television and media, about genes controlling this and genes controlling that. And the relevance is that we have come to believe a concept called genetic determinism. The significance of genetic determinism is this. It is a belief that says that at the moment of conception, when the sperm and egg came together, the genes were selected for your life, and that the rest of your life unfolds from the reading of these genes. Well, there's a problem with that. And the problem with it is this. If it is true, then we become victims of our heredity, don't we? What do, how can we get out of the genes? They're in, built into us. We can't get out of it. And then also something else happens. We become irresponsible. The reason is this. If the genes are making me do these things and I can't change my genes, then what is it that I can do with my life except make sure I probably get the proper medication to make me feel better through the process? And the issue comes down to this point, that this assumption is an assumption <laughs> that it's not true, that genes do not control who you are. And yet, I will have to go through this by going through the fact that there are three assumptions that science is based on that are totally wrong at this time. And these three assumptions include assumption number one. This is assumption that says that biological processes employ Newtonian mechanics. What does that mean? It means this. According to the Newtonian world, the Newtonian vision, the universe is a machine that it's made out of physical parts, and that if you understand how the physical parts interact, you can understand everything about the machine, and that there's no room for energy in there, it's only physical parts. So the relevance is this, by the belief in Newtonian physics, medicine does not entertain the notion that energy is involved in the healing process. Of course, Newtonian physics is out of date now by 75 years because we entered the quantum era in 1925, and yet medicine is still stuck in the biological uh, Newtonian phase. And I'm going to talk about this in the second half of the talk. The second assumption is what I'm going to spend most of the talk on for the first part. The second assumption is based on this, that genes control biological expression. Well, I'm going to show you exactly the absolute chemical truth that genes cannot control biological expression for a very simple reason. Genes can't turn themselves on and they can't turn themselves off. So the genes aren't controlling themselves. They can't control anything else either. And I'll explain where the control comes from. And third, the assumption that Darwinian evolution provided for the existence of the bio biosphere as we see it. This, again, is another uh, mistake in our assumption that, in fact, that uh, it is not a Darwinian process that got us here. It's more of a, what we call a Lamarckian process. And the relevance of that is that organisms always match their environment. And as the environments change, the organisms change to adapt to those environments. Well, what does that mean about yourself? What environments are you living in? And what are your belief systems? They become very important because what we find now is that your genes will adapt to your beliefs. And this becomes a very, very critical part, uh, part of our understanding about life here. So I want to start off with the original mission statement of science. And that was based on a belief before 1600s that God and spirit infused the physical world. And so they had a mission statement. There were scientists before the 1600s, and this was their mission statement to gain an understanding of the natural order so that we can live in harmony with it. 
And that was a nice, beautiful concept that by studying in nature, if we see how it all fits together and all the pieces fit together, then maybe we would be able to fit together better in that picture and survive in, in a much better way than we were doing. And so science's effort was to understand the mechanisms of the universe in regard to the spiritual nature of it. However, around 1600 is when the modern scientific revolution occurred. People like Descartes, people like Isaac Newton got involved and they looked at the universe and said, you know, I, I, there might be a God out there, but we don't need God to explain this because it works like a clockwork mechanism. And that's where Newton got involved and he, with his mathematics was able to map out the movements of the planets and the sun. And obviously then he said, look, it's a machine. I can predict everything about it.